लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन गुड डे एंड वेलकम टू किरलोस्कर न्यूमैटिक कंपनी लिमिटेड क्यू फोर एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर अर्निंग कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल होस्टेड बाय एंटिक स्टॉक ब्रोकिंग एज अ रिमाइंडर ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट्स लाइन विल बी इन द लेसन ओनली मोड एंड देर विल बी एन अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर यू टू आस्क क्वेश्चन आफ्टर द प्रेजेंटेशन कंक्लूड शुड यू नीड असिस्टेंस ड्यूरिंग द कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल प्लीज सिग्नल एन ऑपरेटर बाई प्रेसिंग स्टार देन जीरो ऑन योर टच टोन फोन Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Amit Shah from Antique Stock Broking. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, on behalf of Antique Stock Broking Limited, I welcome you all to uh, Q4 FY24 uh, earnings call of uh, Kirloskar uh, Pneumatic Company Limited. to discuss the results uh, from the management we have mr k shrinivasan managing director and mr ramesh birasda cfo of the company uh, i'll hand over the call to mr k shrinivasan for for his opening remarks post which we can open the floor for q and a uh, over to you sir yeah thank you amit good evening to all of you thanks for joining this call let me at the outset wish you all a belated uh, gudi padwa Yugadi, Baisakhi, Tamil New Year's Day. May the new year bring us all good tidings and joy. I have with me on this call Ramesh Birasa, the CFO, and Jitendra Shah, the company secretary. I am going to request Jitendra to read out the disclaimer for all of us, please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The presentation uploaded on the website of the company and discussion on the financial result during the earnings call. <coughs> may contain statements relating to future business development and economic performance that could constitute forward looking statements while these forward looking statements represent the company judgments and future expectations a number of factors could cause actual developments and results to differ materially from expectations the company undertakes no obligation to publicly revise any forward looking statement to reflect future events or circumstances further investors are requested to exercise their own judgment in assessing various risks associated with the company and also the effectiveness of the measures which taken by the company in tackling them as indicated during the discussions thank you all thank you jitendra so let me start with the details of the year the year f24 was a difficult one We had strong domestic sales growth, but a year in which the exports at 69 crores were nearly a hundred crore lower than the previous year. This meant that the overall sales growth was muted at rupees 1,323 crores, only seven percent higher than the previous year. On the back of a favorable product mix and greater in-house manufacture, the pre-tax profit at rupees 178 crores was nearly 24 percent higher than the previous year. Demand for our products remains strong with a new order booking in the year at an all-time record of 1770 crores nearly 500 crores higher than the previous year this bodes well for the strong sales growth that we have planned for f25 during the year the company gradually enhanced its in-house manufacture at nasik we now manufacture our requirement of alloy steel forgings and critical fabrications This has not only helped us to offer quicker deliveries but also to reduce costs. The capex spend for the year was at rupees 61 crore. This was primarily to enhance our capability to allow us to deliver over 500 crores of sales per quarter. The company also continued on its strong focus to build IP. We had over 15 design and patent filings during the year. The company was also awarded the Incentric Best Employer of the Year Award, which is a testimony to the robust people processes that we follow. The company entered into an agreement with PVC Machines LLC USA to package their diaphragm compressors for various hydrogen compression applications. This is a growth area in India, and we are now well placed to address this opportunity with the best solution available globally. The net working capital at rupees 278 crores was 17.6 percent of sales. This is an improvement over the 19.1 percent that we had last year. We still are looking to reduce it as a percentage further during the subsequent years. 
Consequently, the fresh cash generation during the year F24 post tax, post dividend was over Rs. 125 crores. Let's now discuss the results by product line. The A Composite business continued to grow with its two new product lines the Test Catalipoca centrifugal compressors and the Aria Atmos standard screw compressors, both doing well. The Test Catalipoca has quickly established itself as the preferred choice among centrifugal compressor buyers. We have a good bank of orders for execution for this in F25. Overall, there was intense competition in the air compressor space with nearly all the global players being present and vibing for market share. We continue to grow our business profitably, albeit at a moderate pace. Refrigeration compressors and systems. We had record sales of bare shaft ammonia compressors used in cold chain and ice plants. We remain a dominant player in this segment. The larger installations in food processing plants, dairies and pharma continue to be dominated by imported compressors. We have just started installing our Pione screw compressor packages in this area. This should see significant scale up in F25. As we speak, we have got our first orders for export of this as well. The refrigeration packet sales to the ammonia terminals and petrochemical plants were affected by delays in delivery of compressors from Europe as well as in getting clearance from the EPC contractors for the site. We expect this challenge to ease during the next two quarters. Overall sales in this segment was below our plan. Process gas compression systems. We had record execution of order for oil and gas projects in India during the year, and this not only contributed to sales growth, but also compensated for the poor offtake of CNG packages. We continue to have strong orders in this space. CNG packages and Kalana booster compressor installations continue to lag in spite of various steps and announcements in this sector. We expect to see material change on the ground in F25. There has been significant uptake in both inquiries and finalization of orders for biogas compressor packages. The company has of now the most cost-effective compressor package for this, the Jarilo range, that can handle gas from 0.5 to 250 bar in four-stage configuration. We expect this business to become a significant one during F25 with several major projects under finalization. Export of gas packages to MENA region was lower by nearly 100 crore, as we mentioned earlier. We do not expect any significant improvement in F25 with the current situation in this region. However, our investment to build this business in Southeast Asia is bearing fruit, and this will grow gradually. The OEM services business continues to grow with the installed base itself growing. We expect this to become more and more significant as we go forward. Outlook for F25. The global economy is getting into a new normal with all the wars and uncertainties getting plugged in. The initial rush to find alternate gas sources reducing the concentration of supply chain to one country has clearly crossed the hump. We are into a period of relative stability and modest growth. However, for us at KPCL, we have the advantage of being India-focused and this is an area of high growth. Further, the strategy to focus on building in-house capabilities for manufacture of most critical items and to build a new range of compressors for various requirements based on our IP and design will further strengthen our competitive position in this market. With a strong order bank at the start of the year, we are committed to deliver double-digit growth in top line in F25. This should allow us to reach our aspirational target of Rs. 2,000 growth by next year. The company declared a final dividend of Rs. 4, which is 200%, taking the total dividend for the year to rupees 650, which is 325%. Now with this, I would request Mr. Ramesh Biraza, CFO, to take you through the financials. Ramesh, can you? Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. I trust you have had the opportunity to review results recently posted on NSC and BSA website following the conclusion of our board meeting. Additionally, we have uploaded a presentation detailing our annual results on our company's website. For those who have not had the chance to review the results yet, let me provide a summary of our financial performance for the fourth quarter and fiscal year 2024. Before discussing specifics of our financial performance, let me first highlight some of the year's significant achievements. 
the company recorded new order bookings exceeding rupees 1770 crores during the fiscal year 2024 as of april 1st 2024 the company's order book amounted to rupees 1475 crores a significant increase by 28% from 1150 crores recorded on april 1st 23 This sets the stage for a strong start to FY25. Sales of rupees 1,323 crores, witnessing the growth by 7% over the last year. Profit before tax showed a growth by 24% to the tune of rupees 178 crores. Commissioned the forging facility in Nashik as a part of vertical integration. launch new products such as stage catching coca a centrifugal compressor atmos area and offshell screw compressor and jari low a biogas compressor i will now run through the business results for q4 and the year ended on 31st march 2024 sales for the quarter q4 were higher than the preceding quarter q3 and stood at rupees 490 crores 59% higher than compared to q3 of fy24 and by 36% year on year for the fourth quarter however the sales for the full year showed a growth by 7% over the preceding year as the company reached a total turnover of rupees 1323 crores compared to 1239 crores in the previous year with other income mainly interest receipts dividends surplus on sale of assets up rupees 19 crores against 11 crores in the last year the total income for the year was rupees 1342 crores compared to 1250 crores in the last year with better product mix and better realization of sales metal cost was at rupees 54% of sales compared to 56% in the last year the annual employee related expenses stood at 164 crores up from 144 crores in fy23 this increase in on account of one time expenses of approximately 4 crores for the labor settlement the commencement of forging plant in nashik as a part of our vertical integration strategy and regular salary increments depreciation is in line with previous year and addition to assets the company invested close to rupees 51 crores in capex other expenses are mix of variable cost and fixed cost fy24 is at 18.21% of total income as compared to 18.6% of total income in previous year there is no significant variation in the level of expenditure and the cost control exercise in previous year will continue in the current year accession return in the profit and loss account is one time impact of rupees 8.38 crores taken on account of impairment of road railer business the ebitda in the current year is marginally higher at 16% of total income compared to 14.2% in the previous year this is mainly on account of change in product mix and better realization on sales for the q4 profit before tax was much higher at 16.3% compared to 11.6% of the previous year due to higher sales in q4 fy24 the annual profit before tax improved to 13.3% of total income compared to 11.4% in previous year fy24 profit before tax of rupees 178 crores showed a 25% growth over previous year's pbt of rupees 143 crores profit after tax rose to 133 crores which is 10% of total income compared to 108 crores in previous year which was at 8.7% 1,38,400 equity shares previous year 1,89,400 equity shares under its employee 
stock option program consequently paid off share capital increased 2 rupees 12.94 crores compared to 12.93 crores as at the beginning of the year basic earning per share improved 2 rupees 20.60 per share in the current year compared to 16.82 in the previous year the board has recommended a final dividend at the rate of 200 that is rupees 4 per share for face value of rupees 2 with interim dividend at the rate of 125% the total dividend for FY24 would be 325% as against 275% in FY23. With about 93% of the revenue coming from the completion segment, it remains the only reportable segment. The completion segment earned operating profit of about 20% in the current year compared to 18% in the previous year. The completion segment is consistently sustaining profitability within the range of 18 to 20 percent. Capital employed in the completion segment is almost same of last year. Late cash position over rupees 275 crores as on 30 March 2024. Previous year rupees 190 crores after paying final dividend of the last year and the interim dividend declared in the current year. Apart from capital rupees 61 crores, the company has no loans, neither term loans nor working capital loans. It is a debt-free company. Financial charges are paid to banks for services not related to any borrowings. The ratio of net working capital to sales improved to 17.6% from the previous year's 19.1%. Improvement is driven by higher customer advances and more favorable payment arrangement with suppliers. Receivables have increased from eight to 81 days from eight, 86 days from 81 days in the previous year, primarily due to elevated Q4 sales and similarly supplies outstanding have extended to 86 days from 70 days compared to previous year attributed to improved payment terms with suppliers. Wherever necessary, the figures from the previous year have been regrouped, adjusted to align with current reporting. Now this forum is open for discussion with our esteemed investors. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mahesh Bendri from LIC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for the uh, good results. Uh, sir, our order book backlog has grown by 28% on YY basis. So, going into FY25, uh, uh, is it fair to assume that we will report similar kind of growth? What is there in the order backlog? I think we have been always saying that strong double-digit growth is what we can always confirm. We did slip on the uh, top-line growth last year, so hopefully we should catch up and have a very significant double-digit growth. Let's take it quarter by quarter. Yeah, because the export is the one major, um, I mean, uh, which has pulled us back uh, this year. So do you think any, any improvement? Because number is very small now. I mean, 
Yeah. So we have done only 69 crores of export. We expect to be under 100 crores of export even for the next year. And domestically, we will report. Uh, domestically, we have very strong order books, so we would still be able to deliver at least 20% growth. Okay, okay. And sir, uh, uh, in terms of margins, last two quarters we have been hitting very strong numbers, 17%, and this year we are, this quarter we are hitting 18.7% kind of margin. So, are these margins sustainable? When we believe so. Uh, there are multiple reasons why this margin has come out. It's a process that we have been talking about in the various calls. Directionally, our margins have been improving as the two lagging business started uh, fading away. Uh, the transmission business has been repurposed. That has given us a, a certain margin growth. The road railer business per se has been, uh, let's say we are not running the operation. Now we have also taken the impairment so that uh, hopefully by the next uh, one or two quarters we will dispose the balance assets. So, so all this has ensured that the operating margin has gone up. So this is where we have already planned that it will be, and it will continue to improve as the product mix further improves. Okay. Uh, sir, a few quarters back, we had indicated that we might achieve 2,000 crore of uh, sales so by FY26. So are we still, given this strong order intake, uh, will we will be able to report this kind of number in FY26? Uh, what we have said is, uh, even in the opening comment, I said that by FY26, definitely yes. But on a quarter by quarter, if you add us, you probably try and do it even faster. Sure. So, last question from my end. I mean, uh, in terms of order inflow guidance, you indicated that the inquiry flow has been very strong. So, uh, the uh, order inflow also looks very um, decent for the uh, full year? Order inflow is something that we'll have to wait and watch. The activity level inquiries are pretty good. So last year was a very good order intake. We continue to see a same kind of traction domestically, and we hope that we will have even stronger order intake this year. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Mesh. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Mihir Manohar from Carnelian Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, thanks for giving the opportunity. Uh, and congratulations on a good set of numbers, uh, quite a good set of numbers over there. Uh, sir, on the, on the commentary, you mentioned that uh, CNG and Kalana, uh, they lagged this year. But however, you were expecting a, a material change in FI25. If you can provide clarity, uh, you know, why do you say so? And if you can quantify, you know, what kind of inquiries could be there, what kind of order flow could be there uh, from CNG and Kalana compressors, uh, that will be helpful. Uh, second thing you mentioned also on the biogas, uh, specifically you mentioned that you were expecting a significant uptake in compressor inquiry. I mean, you know, if you can provide some light over here, what is uh, what is happening across the industry, and if you can quantify that, you know, what kind of order inflow, what kind of I mean, value as well as the number of compressors are we expecting for biogas? Uh, and third question was only unallocable expenses. I mean, when I see the unallocable expenses, we are still at the similar level of uh, 65 crores for the full year. Uh, so I mean, uh, versus what it was in the last year. So when should one see the unallocable expenses coming down? Okay, uh, let me first answer the first two questions and then I'm going to request Ramesh to answer the last one. Uh, on the CNG and Kalana, uh, CNG package sales have actually continued to decline. We went down last year, we further went down the year that is just completed. Uh, in Kalana, we actually grew. The number of compressors that went out this year is probably the highest ever. So some totals, both with the uh, CNG and Kalana combined, uh, it still was lower than the last year. Approximately, we did about a, a combined number of packages, about 110 we did. Uh, we were above 150, as you know, uh, the previous year. So it's still much, much lower. Now, this is what is being shipped out. The order intake is being quite different. There have been significant amount of order inflow coming in, primarily around Kalana. Uh, there are also quite a few tenders that we have quoted on the CNG as well. But a lot of them need clearances for us to be shipped out. So this is what we've always been saying, that the order getting it loans doesn't solve the problem unless we get site clearance for them to be shipped out. This, we expect, should start picking up. And once that happens, the execution on this will go up during the year. Hopefully, we are expecting. See, the overall number that is being put out by the Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board is available on the website. You will see that it's roughly about 12,000 stations have to come up in five years. Out of that, one year is already over. So that many have just have to be done in the next three to four years. We expect a significant uptake in clearances to ship these out. 
As far as biogas is concerned, uh, several large players have announced major investments in this space. Having said it, this is a technology that is evolving primarily based on the sustenance and availability of the bio source. Uh, if you set up a biogas plant based on urban waste and then you find it doesn't run well, then you're going to partly switch it with uh, press mud or spent water that you've sourced, then the technology that these plants have to use to work on biogas changes. So today there is going through a bit of a learning. Um, so the scale-up is something that will take time. Having said it, since there is a major commitment for these projects, Again, there is a subtle scheme, there is an announcement that Government of India is at least 5,000 biogas stations, which means 5,000 compressor sets would have to be available. We expect significant pickup. As of now, we have got uh, less than 100 biogas <laughs> package orders. I would say less than 50. But we are negotiating quite a few big numbers. Let's see how it goes during the year. The last question you had on saying that unallocated, unallocated Expand at 55 crores. I'm going to request Ramesh to see if he can throw some light on this. Ramesh? Uh, Neil, uh, just Ramesh Viraza here. Uh, if you see the comparative numbers for FI23 and FI24, there is no significant increase in the cost. Though we are, activity has been increased, but with the various methods of the cost control and cost reduction, we try to maintain the overall cost for this is in the same range, hardly 30 lakh to be in this, otherwise it is well under control uh, for us. Uh, sure, sure, sir, understood. Uh, just lastly on the Nashik forging plant, if you can quantify, what was the capex that we did over there and what will be the per annum cost savings that we are expecting uh, from the Nashik forging plant? The Nashik is a capacity that's going to be predominantly used for in-house requirement. The capex that we have spent very roughly is about 25 watt crores, nothing significant, and that is last year. Before that, we would have spent another about 8 to 10 crores on the uh, setting it up, fabrication, and all that stuff. So uh, it would uh, largely meet our internal requirement, but in terms of activity level, etc., it would be equal to an activity of something like 100 crore of internal valuation. Okay, so understood. You. Thank you, thank you. That's it so much. Thank you. Thank you, Vic. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Shubham from SIMPL. Please go ahead. Hello, so yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So uh, if you could just help me out with the revenue mix for, uh, for FY24 versus FY23. So what was for uh, the uh, air compressor, refrigeration and processed gas. And within gas compressors, what was the revenue for our, our CNG business and other oil and gas? And also, if you could provide the number of mother and booster packages which were installed this year. Okay, so uh, you're asking between 23 and 24 on the air compressor. The air compressor business sales was by and large about the same as the previous year. There was no big growth. Uh, you have, uh, have other questions. You said total compressors. Overall, we have been producing about 3,000 compressors a year. That number has also not changed significantly. So the total number of compressors we delivered is about 3,000 plus. Uh, and that has been by and large same. So which means really the unit price is moved up to a higher value packages. There is no significant growth in the number of compressors that we have made. No, sir. So actually I meant the revenue mix between our air, refrigeration and processed gas segments and also the number of mother and booster packages in our uh, CNG business, and what was the revenue uh, between CNG business and other oil and gas. So, like, if you could provide that revenue mix. You won't have so much of detail. Uh, so, if you want to say that, let's say, CNG and CNG stations and Kalana combined, we have done about 120 compressors. Okay. And uh, so, uh, in the last two, three years, we have launched uh, like new products like Hyonia and Tescat Leboka. So, what kind of revenue contribution have uh, these contributed this year and like to our top line? So, if you look at the new product in our definition, we talk of anything that is launched within three years as new product. And this is a target that we have taken that the sale from new products should go to about 12 to 15 percent. At the moment, it is less than 6 percent. 
Okay, sir. And just uh, last one. So, uh, we have been seeing a lot of investments like in the oil and gas sector globally. So, how is our inquiry pipeline for these and uh, do we see any export scale up for next year? Uh, oil and gas sector, like we mentioned, has been doing well for the domestic market. We have finalized quite a few orders. In exports, the Middle East, there are quite a few inquiries, but the order finalization has been extremely slow and we have not had any major uptake for the Middle East orders. Okay, sir. And just to follow up on the biogas question, so what is the contribution in our order book? And if you could provide any visibility or update about the biogas lending by the government, and do you think uh, this biogas segment for us can scale up to 200 to 300 crore? I think I did answer the earlier question on biogas, so I'll repeat it again. The biogas business, there is an announcement from the government saying that they will set up 5,000 biogas stations within the next five years. Almost all the major players have announced their investment in this space. However, the technology is dependent on the bio source. At the moment, the known bio sources are landfill, urban waste, um, spent wash from distilleries, <coughs> um, stress mark from the sugar plants as well as poultry feed. But this is not a stable availability. Consequently, the kind of biogas compressors they need for each of them is changing. We have got several inquiries. We have finalized about 30 odd packages already. But the numbers will be clearer only as they stabilize. Okay, sir. Uh, do we see any competition here? There are all the compressor players who are trying to offer something. This is a technology that is evolving. So unless the technology stabilizes, we can't say who is going to be the serious competitor. At the moment, there is no specific person who will say that he is leading in the biogas space. Okay, so God. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Dhawan Shah. From Us Accurate Advisors, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So my question is on the agreement which you highlighted in the press release uh, with PDC machine. So what is our scope of work over here? Because you know, if I look at you know the PDC website, I think they are also manufacturing these kind of machines. So uh, is this like they will provide us the technology and will manufacture over here and will supply in the domestic market, or how is the scope of the work in this agreement? Yeah, so it's a good question. Let me clarify. PDC machines are leaders in the hydrogen compression space. In America and in several parts of the world, they deliver complete solutions, which means they can even offer a compressor, dispenser, and even in some cases, a local hydrogen generator, which will actually take electricity and water and generate hydrogen at the site itself. So they are in the complete range of business related to hydrogen. Our specific objective in collaborating with them is to actually package their diaphragm compressor for the Indian market. The Indian market, again, in hydrogen is evolving. We still have to know how this hydrogen compression business is going to develop because in, in situ consumption of hydrogen, be it at the refineries or at the uh, places where hydrogen molecule is required, is pretty much stable. So there the compression required is also understood what kind of compressors we need. Very high pressure compression is required where the hydrogen needs to be stored or transported. This is an evolving space. So we have now the capability to offer them packages for various applications. Our work would be to do the design engineering scoping, get the base compressor from PDC and offer a complete solution to the customer. This is our first phase of collaboration. Okay, okay. And uh, what would be the uh, size of one compressor over here? Because I think the base business is roughly one crore, uh, the larger one. Uh, so here, what would be the size of uh, opportunity for domestic market? So I think we should allow this to evolve because depending on if somebody is going to have a very small test compressor uh, for just filling up a few uh, bottles locally, etc., then it could be an extremely small compressor or it could be a huge compressor if they're going to transport cascades across the country. So this has to evolve and we will take some time before we can. That is one of the reasons why we're not even put out 
saying this will address such a market or this will be the unit price because this has to evolve for at least one or two quarters before we can start putting out numbers. And anything we do, we need to pay to PDC machines like royalty or anything like that. No, no, we don't have to pay them anything. We will buy compressors from them on an exclusive basis, and we will package them for customers in India. Got it. Got it. Got it. And in terms of the order pipeline, uh, can you share what is the order pipeline in the beginning of the year for the domestic market and the export business across all three segments? And how much of that do you foresee can be converted into the orders for FY25? Okay, almost the entire order backlog that we talked of of 1,475 would be predominantly for domestic. I think export would be less than 50 odd crores. So this is predominantly an in a domestic market requirement. Okay, but but this is order book. But uh, in terms of the order pipeline, uh, which you are saying that some some orders are in the negotiation stage. So any ballpark numbers can you share for the domestic and export? This, this doesn't make much of a, a meaning for you because see when you talk of a pipeline under discussion till it becomes an order. Uh, it is uh, still only negotiation, right? So we have huge pipeline of orders under discussion with Middle East for a long time now, and many of them may not even happen during the year. So I would rather not give a number for that. Okay, but but you know, if I look at the last three quarters number in terms of the order flows, I think we are roughly running at roughly 380 or crore quarterly kind of run rate in terms of the order intake. So do you foresee this 380 or crore quarterly run rate can move up to 450, 500 crore, maybe? Two quarters down the line. Uh, we have had a few quarters already where we have booked more than 400 crores of order. Uh, we expect, uh, because when you say that we will do 2,000 crores in the next year or so, uh, we need to get order book of at least about 500 crores a quarter. I think with all our new new products and uh, focus on domestic, we should be able to get there. Okay, so you are confident about this thing. Yes, uh, please. Okay, sure, sure. Thank you. That's all for me. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Ankur Kumar from Alpha Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Congrats for a good set of numbers and thank you for taking my question. Sir, in the past calls, we have been saying that our annual revenue tends to be 1.2 to 1.3 times the opening order book. So, on opening order book of 1475, that would translate to around 1800 crore revenue types. Would you agree with that possibility on this year? I don't know whether you have my business plan with you. Sorry, I don't have that, sir. <laughs> okay, you have the number. <laughs> yeah, because I think in general, past calls, you've been saying that 1.2 yeah, to 1.2. Yeah. So I, I think on a, I said that on a lighter wing. See, uh, you're absolutely right. We generally tend to do, because there are orders that particularly for stays, etc., we book and execute in very short notices. So I think the target is very much around the numbers that you're looking at. Anywhere between 1,700 to 1,800 crores is what we would say. Got it. And sir, our I think raw materials generally have been going up. So are we kind of booked things and so 17 to 18% margin we can sustain or how should we look on that? We will have to look at our input material cost in a little different from what you would look at raw materials. See, except for our forgings and foundries, we don't actually buy unprocessed commodity material. What we buy would be manufactured items, it could be controllers, it could be bearings, it could be parts of machinery, and these have, we have running contracts, and we make these price arrangements before we quote and take up orders. That's the reason why we are able to control our cost and have some bearing on our final selling price. Because our final selling price is a tender-based price. We can't change it once we get the order. So we have also a similar kind of a uh, leverage without buying. So there is a back-to-back -back kind of an arrangement. So we are not so, uh, let's say, commodity price driven. It either goes up or down very quickly. Got it, sir. So margin, you're saying, saying that margin kind of sustained on 70. Yeah, margin is largely driven by our product mix and also on improvements in our processes, which allows us to sort of put things together more efficiently. Got it, sir. Okay. Nothing else from my side, sir. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Darshil Zaveri from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Darshil, you are not audible. Darshil, we can't hear you. Hello, is it better, sir? Yes. Yeah, hi, hi. So sorry, sir, for that. Uh, so most of my questions have been answered. So just pick one, uh, a bit maybe long term, we are targeting maybe you know, 2000 crores next year, which I think maybe we are already at the run rate of doing it maybe this year. So maybe a longer term vision after maybe three years down the line, what do we, you know, any long term vision that we could quote? Like, because we, I think all our sectors are, I think, you know, firing. So any, you know, comment on that would be great. So. Yeah, so I have mentioned this in a couple of other calls as well, and I will take a few minutes to explain the whole thing. First thing going for our favor is that we are in a sector, capital goods sector, particularly uh, in manufacturing. That is doing well. It is doing well in the geography we operate. We are dependent almost entirely on how India does, and so to that extent, we are in a good place at a good time. Uh, manufacturing is growing, capital goods in particular will grow even ahead of the manufacturing sector growth. So that's a tailwind that's available for us. Second is, we are in a sector which is driven by a couple of major transitions. There is an energy transition out there and we will get to benefit from it. Uh, be it from uh, solid fuel to liquid to gas, any kind of a gaseous form, be it natural gas, biogas, hydrogen, all this is really up our alley. So there is an energy transition and we are in the thick of things as far as that is concerned. Then internal capability building, ability to make our own designs, ability to make our own products is another advantage that we have. The fourth is our supply chain business. Most of our competitors in India have supply chains that extend between 7,000 to 12,000 kilometers. Critical parts for them have to be all imported from different places, be it Europe, be it China. We are having a supply chain within 200 kilometers. All that I make is between Nasdaq, Saswad, and Hadafsar. So my supply chain is within 200 kilometers compared to competition who has to grapple with significantly long supply chain. I'm not impacted by what happens in Red Sea. I'm not impacted by what happens in any other part of the world. I'm only lastly worried about what happens in the area I operate. So everything seems to be going in our favor. With that, I have been always saying that the market size is huge. Addressing it with a 20% growth year on year for a long period of time is something that is possible and very, very doable. So that is what we are working on and that is broadly what we are looking at. That will give you a good uh, answer. Oh, oh, yes, that answers the question perfectly. So thank you so much for that. And so just in relation to our growth, so so our margins, as we say, are maybe being driven more by a change in product mix. So with our forging and new products, what is the aspirational margin? And, you know, can we, you know, now touch 20% is something that we could look at? Uh, we have been saying this in other calls as well. Aspirationally, we will get to company first to 18 to 20. We can go higher than that. But that's a trade-off that we will take a call as we get to that between more aggressive growth as well as improvement on margin. So there would be some kind of a, a trade-off based on how fast we would aspire to grow as well as how big the margin growth can be. So directionally getting to 18 to 20 is a thing that we'll work on first step. Oh, perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, that answers all my questions. So all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Sahil Sangvi from Monarch Network Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening, sir, and congratulations for a very good set of numbers. Um, uh, while I've understood uh, how, uh, what, what are the input uh, components for you, uh, there's a dip in the gross margins when I look at YOI or QOQ basis. I think we ended at 44% versus 45 and 48 YOI QOQ. So any explanation on this front? I will have to take Ramesh's help. The only thing I'll say, looking at a gross margin, uh, not operating margin, then there are several issues that we'll have to come up. First is, uh, we take in a one-time, as far as the road railer is concerned, uh, which is about uh, 8.9 crores that we have taken. 
Also, you will find uh, that there is a folk row that you took in Q1, which is related to the employee's thing. Uh, one-time settlement of all the dismissed employees, etc. So I, I think there has only been an improvement in margin, but let me ask Ramesh to check what you're asking. We'll take the next yeah. question, we'll come back to you. Ramesh, you have an answer no, for this? Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you check with the F quarter FI23 and fourth quarter FI24, is it uh, is it you are comparing the same thing what I am speaking? Fourth quarter FI23 and fourth quarter FI24, right? Go ahead, you may be there, but you may no. not. Okay, uh, this mainly change in the product mix, where uh, in the FI23 and FI24, where we are saying that in FI24 quarter four, it is mainly we increase the CNG packages and lower of the, not lower, but it is stabilizing the O&M business. And that is why it is reflecting the change in the uh, ratio to RMSP, raw material to selling price. Got it, got it. That, that explains. Um, and um, also, uh, if you would uh, give me the split for Q4 when it comes to uh, the equipment versus the uh, packages split. See, we have been saying that we will get it to a 60-40 in favor of equipment. It has not happened yet. We are still about 50-50. Similarly, can you give me uh, the split of air compressors, refrigeration and process gas uh, for Q4 only? I mean, I understand someone else has asked this, but would it be possible or? It is possible, but I think it is more safer to stay within a range because what happens, these quarterly numbers are something that keeps changing. So I would not give too much of weightage to it. It's still within the range that we talk of, roughly 20-25 for air, 30-35 for refrigeration, 45-ish for gas. So just for your feeling, yes, Q4, our gas packages were significantly higher than the traditional numbers. If you if you want, I can elaborate on the full year number from FY23 and FY24 full year number. The air compressor division which is roughly in the same range of 257 crores. The ACR, refrigeration, it is almost in the same range of 275 crores and major driven by the gas system where we have got a major increase and our another non reportable segment of transmission business where we have got the major improvement in the top line. Uh, my question would be, uh, when do you expect the order booking for CNG stations to pick up? Would it be after elections? Um, what kind of ground traction are you seeing on that front? Like I said, the order booking is there. Clearance for shipping to install is what is waiting. So most of them have placed orders. So we, are, uh, we have orders. We have orders for CNG stations. We have orders for Kerala. But we need to get clearances as and when they have their site ready, they have their gas allocation, and then we will commission them. We'll ship it and commission them. The margins, right? I mean, if whenever that gets fixed. So it's very difficult to answer the question when they will give clearance. There are so many things like it. That's why I said in the opening comment, there have been so many promises, so many announcements. We are waiting for them to happen. Does that answer your question, Sahil? Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Ligant Harira from Green Edge Wealth. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is on the, uh, you know, the, the large gas packages, uh, you know, primarily which we, you know, last time you said that, you know, we do around 12 to 15 uh, gas packages, the total market size in India. And, uh, you know, in Middle East, it is even larger. Uh, so on this, you know, export side, you know, the negotiations have been going on for so long. And, and you know, if you can just give some idea of, you know, when do they fructify or do they not? Do we change strategy there? And, you know, do we look at any other regions? Uh, any such color would be useful. Uh, domestic, these uh, 15 large packages and several smaller ones improvements, that stays, continues, and we have a fairly 
high visibility on this. We also win a significant share of these orders. We lose very few. Uh, in international business, we operate primarily in the MENA region, Middle East, North Africa. We do not have such a clear visibility on how and how fast they finalize and who gets the order because we are one among maybe a, uh, a host of participants. Many of the orders don't even get finalized. Some eventually we realize the EPC contractor bought it partly from China, partly he did it himself. So there are uh, there is still a lot of market operating gaps that we are unable to understand fully. If the market is still very clear, I think that is also evolving because a lot of what happened in the last two, three years were first time because there was a crisis and they all had to do things quickly. We won some orders, we lost a lot of them. This is evolving still. Now I would say it's getting more and more to a steady state, but having said it, the last at least three months or so, practically no major order has been finalized for anybody. And even what people have finalized and announced, they have all been put on hold. So there is a uncertainty out there and that is coming from multiple reasons. So we have to wait and watch. I can't say that, look, that's why when somebody says, tell me what is the pipeline, how many are likely to win. I don't have a ratio which I can share reasonably with you and expect it to happen. If I know that, look, if I have a 2,000 pros of quotation out there, I'll get 10%, I can share that with you. I don't have such ratio now. Right. All right, sir. So that's, that's uh, good enough and excellent, sir. Uh, second, uh, for FI24, we see that, you know, the proportion of uh, air and uh, refrigeration compression has gone down versus last year. Uh, and it's probably because the gas division has done much better. Uh, but, but you know, in terms of these, you know, new launches, you know, the Keone screw compressors, uh, you know, we, we even earlier, you know, we said that we might be able to launch around 8 or 9 SKUs. Uh, and then, you know, the market acceptability was a little slower than expected. So, you can just give us some progress on this particular front, the Keone screw compressor. So, the first part of your uh, prognosis is correct that, yes, the gas business grew faster than the other two within the same broad range that we have been maintaining because that allows us to do the business modeling. So, it is within that range, but it is the area that, yes, the gas grew faster, the other two was relatively slower growth. That's a fact. Uh, several, and the reasons are many, several of the new announcements that we made as product developments, which were largely in air and in this, uh, in the refrigeration area, have not scaled up as quickly as we expected. But having said it, I also know that we have picked up several orders which will allow me to come back to the growth rate in the current year, F25. So it will come back. It's been a lag but it is not a, a failure kind of thing. So the products have not failed. The products have not taken off as fast as we expected, but they are scaling up now. All right, all right, sir. All right, sir, and lastly, I don't know if this was asked earlier, that, you know, what is our play in the compressed biogas? Like, you know, India is going to have five and plants and, you know, 100 plants Reliance is putting up. So do we have any play in this compressed biogas plants, the small 100 crore plants which are coming up? Yeah, so I have answered this, but I'll repeat it for you. Yes, we have gas packages for all kinds of biosources. The technology that will be used would depend on the biosource. Un unfortunately, this is not fully stabilized, and so it's evolving. We have compressors if people use PSA. We have compressors if they use molecular feed. We have compressors if you use uh, washing cleaning systems. So we have compressors for all ways of generating biogas. We have a full jari low range. We are the only people who have customized biogas specific compressors. We are in discussion with almost all the major package builders, so we are happy to be in this industry. You said it right. Government's announcement is 5,000 biogas stations in five years. Hopefully, a significant part of that should be our compressors. Right, sir. sir and any any ballpark of per plant, you know, what is the revenue opportunity? Like if 100 crore is the total capex in one biogas plant. I, I think, like I said, technology is evolving. I have compressors starting at uh, 60 lakh going up to 2.5 crores. Okay. No, no, so that's, that's a good range. And this, this number depends on what is the feedstock which is used, right? Whether it is the press mud or whether it is the biomass or... Whatever. So the biosource will determine the technology that is used to clean it and process the biogas. Then the compressor comes in, they could be two compressors, they could be one, then it depends on the offtake. Are they going to put it into the pipeline? Are they going to fill it cascade the 250 bar and ship it around? So there are multiple 
uh, variables out there. So like I said, we have a compressor package system for every which way they go. But they should go somewhere first. Right, right, right. No, no, thank you, sir. And thanks always for answering in such detail and, you know, the vivid description about all the processes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Abhinit Anand from CP Invest Management. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. sir. First of all, you, uh, you know, talked about uh, what is working in your favor as a, as a sector and as a firm as well. And uh, in that, you mentioned that the market size is huge. And, uh, you know, addressing with a 20% growth is a possibility. At, uh, I mean, here you are talking about the gas part, right? Because the rough and air compressor type of has been practiced for last few years. So if you can throw some light in terms of, uh, I mean, how big is that uh, gas part and uh, you know, are we gaining market share or something of that sort? That would be helpful. Okay. So, if you look at the air compressor business, Indian market is roughly 5,000 crore plus. Our current share is less than 5%. There is enough headroom for us to grow. So, that's the first one. If you look at the refrigeration market, today we currently address only the cold chain ice plants as well as the hydrocarbon driven biogas packages. There is a huge play out there for commercial refrigeration where we will eventually come up with several products to address. This industry also, if you look at, I'm leaving out the comfort, I'm looking only at industrial and commercial. That alone is worth about 3,000 crores. So look at the gas business, if you split it into two parts, one is the upstream, midstream and downstream, that's a 2,000 crore market. If you, uh, and that has got a whole lot of things, we are not into everything, but we are only into a relatively smaller part of that package. Then, of course, there is the, uh, disp the distribution of CNG gas. Then there is a biogas. Then there is hydrogen. Now, all these are growing areas. So, the market is evolving. There is not a specific number that you can put at this stage, but they are all significant in size. So, overall, like I said, the market is huge. Now, uh, that's, I'm only talking of India, and India is less than 2% of the global opportunity. Uh, if you have a robust, winning product profile here, then we can aspire to take it to other parts of the world in a phased manner. We won't run all over the place to sell something, but we can do that in a phased manner. And that's how we strategize. I think uh, when the other gentleman asked me, how do you see it on a medium term, India-focused, 20% is a reasonable number to look at. Okay, thanks. Second is, sir, in terms of, uh, you know, there are three numbers that you talked about. Uh, one that will grow by double digit, which is obviously a very large range. Uh, second, you did mention about, the, because, you know, exports we are not expecting much even in this year. So, domestic, you indicated a 20% growth. And thirdly, this is... Overall, overall, not only domestic. Okay, overall. And this 17 to 1800 that you talked about actually indicates somewhere around 25 to 35% growth. So which one, which one is the most realistic that we should be considering? Sir? So I think you must take the lowest as a, as a regular thing and then uh, quarter by quarter we'll try and get better. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that, sir. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Manish Goel from ThinkWise Wealth Managers, LLP. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, and sir, congratulations on great numbers for quarter four, sir. So, a few questions. First one, just a clarification that uh, in, we, we probably mentioned that the gas business uh, saw decent growth in the current year. So, this was despite the uh, decline in the uh, export revenues, what we saw in the current year by 100 crores. Yes. And that num is that number 790 crores for the full year in gas business? No, we don't give a specific number for any of the three verticals. Uh, we uh, said that we have, by and large, been in the range of about 45%. Uh, and 40, 45% is what we always give as a guidance. We don't give specific numbers for each, and there is a reason for it. It's not that we want to hide anything from you. Uh, internally, when we track it, let's say I do a lot of my biogas manufacture in what I internally call as a air compressor division because that is manufacturing-wise a reciprocating compressor. So it's so confusing to put out these numbers outside, so we give a range within which these businesses operate. 
Sure. And that is more reasonable for an external person to understand. So we are not given specific numbers for air, refrigeration or gas. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I probably was uh, calculating from the number what uh, uh, Mr. Ramesh gave, uh, that 257 crores for air and 275 crores for refrigeration. No, no. Uh, to the refrigeration, actually, in what we externally talk of includes, uh, like I said, other things. So there's about 300 and odd number for that as well. So that's why I said we'll have to be a little more careful. We'll give you a range which is more meaningful. Sure, sure. Okay, sir. And, sir, on the uh, revenue breakup wise, uh, so uh, how much was it between product projects and products for the Q4 and for the full year? I think we give only for the full year. We don't give for quarter, like I said, because it again confuses. The split is approximately 50-50 for this year. This year, there has been a clear movement towards more equipment compared to our usual 40-60. It has moved towards about 50-50. Okay. And, and so with the new product launches, uh, like uh, uh, for the centrifugal compressor, test caterpillar, POCA, and uh, atmosphere, so how, how will we increase our addressable market uh, uh, probably uh, in recent past? And when you mentioned that we expect uh, uh, revenue from new products to increase from, say, roughly 6% or to 15%, over next couple of years. So just want to get a sense because on a 2000 crore number, that would be uh, nearly 300 crores revenue from new products. So just wanted to get a sense that uh, probably from how we are looking to arrive at this number. So let me give you a few numbers. I said new product is what we launched within the previous three years. So this year, Kalana also remains a new product. It will probably stop being a new product the next year. Next year, the 26th. And test capital in 27. So we have to keep understanding the new products is a continuously moving thing. This year, if you look at the market, test capital poker, centrifugal compressor market in India is roughly our estimated anywhere between 300 to 500 crores, and this excludes what can go into oil and gas sector. So that's the market size. So when you're looking at an opportunity of building about 10% to 12% of new products in a sale, it's a continuous process. New products will continue to happen based on our IT creation. And as they scale up, you will end up using these numbers. The addressable market we pick are generally for markets of significant size. Each of the new products we pick generally tend to address markets anywhere between 100 to 500 crores. Sure. Okay. Okay. No, because this, the, the off-the-shelf screw compressors, what we have launched with the smaller range, ideally it's uh, been very competitive and has been seeing a lot of import from China. And we have just recently entered, so just uh, probably wanted to... The point is 100% right. In India imports anything at between 30,000 compressors or air ends from China and package them. So you can calculate how big that market is, and that's the market we seek to address, because these are markets which people in India have currently not making anything for. And if we are going to become more and more India-dependent as the Chinese price also keeps going up, you will find these are relatively easier markets to address and break in once you have your cost positions right. Right, sir. Uh, uh, thank you so much, sir. In, in addition to this, uh, if you see the talk by the MD, the biogas, which is the upcoming market, and for that we are already ready with the compressor, and which are the coming with the biogas packages or the system, we are ready to provide the whole package to them. So before uh, asking for the competitors, we are ready and we are ready to implement the entire biogas package to any of the company here. So well ahead of all competitors, we are ready with the product. Wonderful, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Due to time constraint, that will be the last question. I will now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Uh, so let me thank all of you for your patience. I think we have had a, a, a very checkered year when we had poor sales for three quarters and then we started getting a better package for the last quarter. Hope that the current year that we are starting should be far more uh, smooth as we go across so that the numbers are literally easier for people to understand and appreciate. So thank you all for your patience and hope to come up with good numbers in the next quarter as well. 
on behalf of antique stock broking that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines